pure classicism is the most difficult form of dance. The grand pas classique evokes the essence of the style required for classical ballet. Immaculate technique. This is Sylvie Guillem, a beautifully trained young French ballerina. She is perfect for this. Now, if you have all the necessary inner qualities, what must you do to become a ballerina? An ideal body is a very good start, but it is very rare. The basic requirements are a small head on a very long neck. It's preferable to have a long legs and long arms to create the beautiful line that classical ballet requires. Ideally, you need beautifully arched feet, and these are rare indeed. Classical ballet is based on what we call turn out, which is the ability to rotate the legs out from the hips. Some have natural turn out, and they are lucky. For others, it will come from training. Et un, et deux, et trois. But even a perfect body and the best training are not enough. Class prepares our bodies every morning for the work of the day. We say, if you don't take class for two days, you notice it. If you don't take class for four days, everybody notices. Très haut à mi pointe, fermé derrière, yeah, hop le bras, deux, sentez le coup de pied, à fond la pointe, hop, doucement, hop, un, deux, trois, quatre, relevé. The body relevé, never lies. The dance and every ballet lesson as well deux, is like a restez, confession. Deux, each time I approach the bar, I begin a battle with my own body, which rebels like an untrained horse. There is a special pleasure and satisfaction in this, an almost masochistic pleasure in the body's rebellion. I must get it under control and make it respond. Class starts with the simplest exercises to warm up the engine slowly and then goes on for 90 minutes a day, every day, all our working lives. In addition to class and rehearsal, dancers may need extra help to avoid strain. 
In America, it's very scientific. In New York, after taking classes, American Ballet Theater at the Met, I often go up Broadway to the Anderson Kozakov studio. Here, I work with Brenda Anderson. Bend the knees, now roll out of it, roll down, straighten the legs. This exercise releases the tension from my back. It stretches my spine while relaxing me after all the tension build up in studio or performance. Oh, this feels good here. Do it once more and then we'll do this one. This is not just to build up strength, but to stretch muscles and make them respond better. This is to help deal with stomach muscles, especially important to ballerinas who have had babies. It helps to get you back into shape again as I found out myself. Alternately, strength building and relaxation helps to build your stamina. That was nice. Yeah, that was something creative. <laughs> creative. <laughs> Good. And straighten out. Drop. And if I need extra strength for a particular role, I go to see Marika Molnar at the Sports Injury Center. She knows all about dancers as well as the athletes. Two, three. Pull down harder. Four. Five. Six. Seven. seven. Pull down. Eight. Nine. Ten. And rest. We're going to do now. We're going at a faster speed. Back and rest. God, he's strong. Back and rest. I can push up. And rest. Well, I have you at a disadvantage. <laughs> go, go. That's it. That particular machine is called a Cybex machine, and it's an isokinetic exercise so machine. Oh, and she sits in the chair and angles back about 110 degrees, which makes her quadriceps, so the front of her thigh, be more efficient, efficiently used with her knee bent. And then she brings it through the full range of motion and straightens her knee. And it's a specific exercise for the quadriceps on the way up and the hamstring muscles, which are in the back of your thigh on the way down. Rest, relax. When we were lying down on the table, basically I was working at stretching Natasha at, to the end of her range of motion. I've been watching this go up. It goes up. But you can see that the right leg is still stronger than the left. Is it? Look at that. It's much stronger. What are you doing with that leg? Just to work the left leg a little harder. Up and down. This is special preparation for Swan Lake. And down, stretch the arms over your She head. pushes my back so hard, and, and that down. helps me now build extra flexibility forward. and strength reach, in my upper reach, body. Reach. After this, oh, I feel as though oh, my God, arms down. could become wings and, and maybe make me fly. Oh, don't push me so hard. <laughs> You're strong, I thought. That's too easy. OK, do a few first, warm up. I can feel and I can sense the tension in her tissues that tell me right before I have to stop. And then I stop. Even if she says I can go further, which she usually does, but it's a fine line. Try and stay at that open range at the very end there. Push back. Stretch. And push. Reach, oh, stay there, stay there, 
stay there. That's great. Okay. And relax. Okay, let's move on to the other one now. A ballerina must take care of her body and every single detail of her appearance. She must have a sense of herself to be able to wear a costume as if she was born into it, whatever it is, a tutu or a romantic long dress. If the costume doesn't appeal to her or doesn't fit like a second skin, that affects her performance. A ballerina must know what looks right on her body and what suits her. I'll show you again. We'll have another fitting you can see. The rules for ballet makeup are as strict as the grammar of the steps. Hair to be held in a bun. The bun not too low to spoil the line of the neck. Eyes and mouth clearly defined. Don Quixote is a classical ballet but stylized Spanish. I try to get a Spanish look in my makeup. Then I add a flower. That's not good color, it's wrong color. Maybe this one, maybe two. Then put here, or where? Maybe this side is better, just one. My lips is not red enough and needs more color of the cheeks, I think. It's too pale for Don Quixote. I have to look Spanish at least a little bit, not totally Russian. And point shoes complete our appearance and indeed support our performance. I've bought thousands of them from Bernard Kohler. The original uh, ballet shoes were a soft shoe, uh, which was just designed to protect the feet. And then they progressed from there to uh, various other refined instruments of torture, which were a very narrow last, uh, dating back to Pavlova's days, where the last compressed the bones of the foot into that sort of shape, so that all the strength was created by the bones being in the form of a tube. And from there, I'm afraid the dancers have rebelled a little bit and they require a bit more comfort, as well as more assistance from the shoe. That I feel comfortable. That here. And that one, no. No. And I don't understand the difference. Hmm? Can check. you see the difference? Yes, yeah, huh? let's check the measurement chart first. That's good shoe. Yeah. And I like here, it's flat, you know, no bump. Here. That's right, yeah. It's nice. These are the tools of their trade. They rely on these for their art and their living and for their uh, whole way of life and uh, the slightest difference in the shoe can make a tremendous amount of difference to your performance. One eighth of an inch lower on the vent. Lower? This is one eighth lower than that one. What did it mean slower? Shorter. Short. The this one short. shorter. Shorter than that one, yeah, slightly. And one what about an the length? And the back, two and three quarter. Okay. Two and three quarters. The back is the same. The same? Yeah. But why this bigger than that? Huh? Shorter term. Short. Maybe that makes it difference. That's what's doing it. It's funny, but it's yeah. such a... It's just like that. It makes yeah, just that different. fraction. Yeah, it makes all the difference. Because oh. what that does, that gives uh, you a little bit more at the back there, yes. which makes your foot feel as though it's coming out. and c coming comfortably. That's right. And That's here, it. I feel like that. That's know? it. Yeah, it makes your toes claw, <laughs> claw together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm with you.
In this program, you have already seen ballerinas from Russia, France, Italy, and America. Ballerina is an international word. We all use the same universal language of ballet, but we speak with different accents. Our different accents start in the classroom. Let me take you first to my old classroom, in my beloved Vaganova school in Leningrad. On entering this school, you are immediately immersed in a special atmosphere, maybe a little old-fashioned, and at the same time, typically Russian atmosphere of life in the service of the arts. The Vaganova School of Ballet emphasizes harmony, sense of movement, and the use of space. From our teachers, we learned much more than technique. To us, they were living examples of social grace and elegant simplicity and manners. Aren't these young girls really beautiful? Already I can see clear beautiful line and elegance. It makes me very proud. It is very aristocratic. After all, Kirov dancers are descendants of the Imperial Russian Ballet. At the school we learned different styles because we had important classes in national and historical dance. This solo from Raimonda is an example of a Hungarian stylized dance put by the great choreographer Mario Spitsipa into a classical variation for the ballerina. In this character, we have to use shoulders and torso, what we call apple man. It makes it distinctive, as a little paprika.
but I mustn't forget that in Russia, as well as Leningrad, there is Moscow. For me, the supreme example of the Russian training is the Bolshoi ballerina, Maya Plisetskaya. class at the School of American Ballet in New York. The teacher is the Russian ballerina, Alexandra Danilova. She trained and danced in my native city, Leningrad. Here she teaches young American girls who dream of joining one of the great ballet companies of New York. The School of American Ballet was created by George Balanchine. He also came from Leningrad. He came to America to make ballet based on the Russian technique he brought with him. And he made it faster and more energetic, just like New York itself. A former student of the school, now with American Ballet Theatre, is Susan Jaffe. These are the girls at the Royal Ballet School in London. The choreography of Frederick Ashton has a great influence on what is required from English dancers. Their classical technique needs to be touched by gentleness, restraint and good manners. Heel on the floor, heel on the floor. Girls, fondue, and... They must appear modest rather than flamboyant. And down and uh, out. Play on the midpoint, the whole thing. Back and uh, up. Side and uh, two. And up. Tombe and uh, up. Play. Left hip back, foot without the bar, girls. Don't drop the back. Don't drop the back on the double. And clear and up. Stretch the knee. Shoulders down. Push quicker from the back leg. I am glad to see that giving class is a Russian trained ballerina, Galina Samsova. And don't be ahead of music too. And uh, one, two, plie. Up, down, and the head, head. The English ballerina, Antoinette Sibley, 
trained at the Royal Ballet School from the age of 10. Here she is as Frederick Ashton's Cinderella. Now they are in Copenhagen, where the Royal Danish Ballet has preserved its tradition for many years. The founding father of the Danish Ballet was Auguste Bournonville. He trained in Paris. He brought back to Denmark the old French style. This style has great simplicity but uses very brilliant work for the legs and feet. The basic steps will be the same, but the Danes sometimes use them in a different way. The Burnanville technique is kept alive in the company and school. Kirsten Ralev, who was a leading dancer with the Royal Danish Ballet, is the teacher. Basic steps to, to make a dancer is something you have to train. You have to train your body, your feet, your knee, your upper body. Everything has to be trained in a, in, in a special way every day. And that counts for Russian style, Italian style, French style, and Danish style. That's the same. That's what I mean. And uh, there, apart from the Russian, that, that's how, for instance, they use the arm in the Russian style. If you open your arms, and you, you might do something like that with your hands, but we don't do that in Bronoville. We do it very simple, very plain, bring the arms down like that. That gives a little different softness of the style. It's not so... Maybe not so sparkling, I don't know. To me it is. And especially the, the footwork in Bono is very sparkling, I find. Company class is light and lively. The dancers need to keep the arms simple because the footwork is so fast. And the Burnanville tradition finds its way into the repertoire of the company in the Royal Theatre in Copenhagen. In one of his ballets, Conservatoriet, Burnanville created a picture of his student days in Paris in the 1820s. This is Lise Jefferson.
I love to dance Bonneville. I love the style. It's um, somehow it's so um, human uh, because if you think about technique, you can forget about it. Of course, the technique had to be there, but uh, if you are thinking steps, you know, you're looking very funny in your face. And uh, for me, uh, if you can see that, uh, I don't like to, to watch it. And I don't like to dance it either. look very easy, but they are really very hard. It should be very soft, but you have to have the control over your legs, of course, as in other things too. And then you have to smile and say, oh, it's nothing, but it's really hard. <laughs> I feel it's hard. Now we are in Paris, where Bournonville learned everything he knew about dancing. The French ballerinas have developed from the style he found there, as their dancing was influenced by the virtuoso style of the Italian school at the end of the last century. Today the French style is actually Franco-Italian, a very dazzling technique, very clear and brilliant in its manner, with lots of chic. At the school of the Paris Opera Ballet, you will hear the teacher, Christian Vossard, calling for more chic, plus de chic. The class ends with the reverence, a preparation for taking their bows on stage. It is also a mark of respect to our profession. And now he is the French style at its most pure and elegant. Isabelle Guerin dances the variation from the Wedding Pas de Day from Sleeping Beauty.
is a great asset for a ballerina to be versatile, particularly in contemporary ballets, to be able to express a wide range of dramatic moods. In a company like the Dance Fiat of Harlem, there is a very wide ranging repertoire. Here is the ballerina Virginia Johnson in a variety of roles. In Arthur Mitchell's choreography to Greek's Holberg Suite. As Desdemona in a balletic version of Othello. As Lizzie Borden, who killed her parents with an axe in Agnes de Mille's version of the story Fall Revelation. And as Blanche Dubois, Tennessee Williams' tragic heroine in a streetcar named Desire. In the next program, I will talk about the most important man in the ballerina's dancing life, her partner. I will finish now with another performance by that wonderful virtuoso ballerina, Sylvie Guillem, with her partner, Manuel Legris, dancing the Grand Parc Classique.
week's programme, Natalia Makarova looks at the most important man in the ballerina's life, her partner. The ballerina is like the head of any company. There are those who support her, but once she steps on stage, she must assume responsibility for the performance. Um, there she is the focus of attention. She is aided by her partner and very often soloist and the corps de ballet. They can inspire her. She must inspire them. Here we rehearse the party scene from the second act of Kenneth Macmillan's ballet, Manon. Manon comes to the party with her new protector. Every man in the room is attracted to her. Macmillan shows this by having the man carry Manon high in the air and pass her from one man to another. This means each man has to know how to carry me and how to throw me. I have to trust them. We all have to trust each other, like a team of acrobats. Manon's allure would disappear if she spent the whole time looking down, worrying that the men were going to drop her. <laughs> Oh, I think, ah, Derek, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Can you think about not going inside of the circle, outside of the circle? Mm -hmm. You know, like, Big do one. promenade not here, out of the circle. If it's, we have, yeah? So just a brief pause and then go on. No, but we no. go in, inside to resist me. Like, like that, you know, resist me, resist. Yeah, that's what has to be. This is. This is, go other way, go other way, not, that's it, that's the feeling, yes, well, because okay. you go with me instead of go out, that's what's balancing, yeah, Max, you so know? Try it once again with Anthony. Yes, that's it, that's, that's it, what is it? Yeah, but that's going to be hard to do this next thing. I don't think about next. <laughs> <laughs> On that side, here's on that side, and don't go there. Don't make me already go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here, that's it, that's it, and, and here. That's what's good. I changed my grip. That's why, when she's sized down your chest, the bottom pushes that, and where Robert changes his grip, so he gets his bottom off his chest. I hold it with my elbows and change it here. <laughs> Thrill. <laughs> my feet hardly ever touch the ground in this scene. Yet I am dancing all the time in the arms of my admirers. My cavaliers must make me feel safe, yet make me feel free. A cavalier must present his ballerina to the audience. Above all, he must help her to look good.
course, in what you have just seen, we were putting into practice many of the techniques of partnering we learn at school in our PADD classes. This is the same lift you saw in the Manon rehearsal. This is a PADD class at the Royal Ballet School in London. <laughs> the teacher yes. is David yes. Drew. Uh, you must straighten the countdowns a little bit on the sums, a little bit. So much of part of Derwick is confidence. And it is very scary being a lady in these situations, I do appreciate. Now, you've got some good men here, slightly more experienced than you are, so we're going to try a couple of things, because you know you can trust them. Yes? Introduction, please, Julia. And... Look into the hand. Good. Allongé, close tight fifth and plié. Good. Attitude. Allongé, coupé and down. Second fifth down. Hold the second. Weight on the left side, plié. Arabesque, heel forward, plié. Good. Attitude, arm side, allongé. Take the waist close, fifth on point without any bourre. Good, relax for a moment. Now the lady cannot turn herself, you must turn her. And down. That's better. OK, relax. Good. Now let's assume that Michael, Cassidy is, is my partner, and I'm the lady here. I'm already too close, because I'm going to kick him. He mustn't crowd me, and I must give her enough clearance. I take a long preparation here. My leg goes to Alice Con to the corner, so I'm ultra-turned out. As soon as my foot has passed him, he comes in, and all the way around, and into the addo. You need that much space. Don't seek the full security of the partner. Practice in your own time. No. No, you see, Belinda, you're backmoning that way. You're psychologically, and I'm very glad you are, you're worried about kicking the man in a rather vital place. Thank you very much for that consideration. But that's his problem, not yours. <laughs> Through first, arms on the dom. Bure. Down to the face, reverence. Mena. Up. Pulse. No arch. No arch. Resolve into the symmetrical fish. Chin up, back up. And recover them up. They and hold. Thank you, Julia. OK, yes. Um, Becky, I have to tell you something that you did. Your Alice Con was a bit strange. Um, yes, gentlemen, when you've got the ladies into this fish, be in the arabesque, please. You've got the ladies into this fish here, and you're holding them. Now, to recover the lady from that position, bring your shoulder right down to her so you get the arm all the way round, and then you can lift the lady high to accommodate a long leg if she has one. You see, some of you, what is happening is you have the lady here in the fish. And it's understandable because it's difficult enough to get her there at the best of times. So you've got her there, and what you do is just that. And then you've hardly got any hand around her. See what happens? See, it's a strain on her and on me. Think of rugby. When you tackle, you tackle with the shoulder. Take the shoulder to the back. Think of getting the shoulder down. Just get the lady into the fish from an arabesque, not over your shoulder. Symmetrical, get the left hip down. Left hip down, ladies, chins up, eyes up. Right. Now, gentlemen, take your right shoulder to the lady's back. That's it. Then you should be able to get your left arm well round. And then you can lift the lady very high. That's better. Step over pay pose. Hit the arabesque on the first note. Bah. 
Never pay through. You must remember, Never these are still very young, not fully formed bodies. For the girls, it can be quite frightening. Their partners are still developing the strengths and knowledge needed to be a good partner. From the jambal into the fish. Okay, recover the arabesque. Level pay. Up the back. Turn. Glissade, jeté. Legs across. And finish. Good, good attempt. Now, what happened here? <laughs> What do you think went wrong? You didn't get up enough, okay. Right, okay, foot in front, rhythmical, you're going to do step, gallop, plie, jump. And step, gallop, plie, jump. Upper back, upper back. Better, okay, lift her off and down, still hold as you come down. Now that same feeling but without me. Same feeling. Now I'm going to be here. Give her something more straightforward, will you? A simple waltz, a simple waltz. Just a simple waltz, and go on the last bar. Four, two, three. And. Two, two, three, three, two, three. Better. Back, arch, recover to arabesque. Good. Yes, good lad, well done. He actually anticipated and moved across slightly. And you weren't really musical on the preparation, but he retrieved the situation for you. But that was better. It's not an easy lift, it's quite scary. One of my favorite partners, Anthony Dow, trained at the Royal Ballet School. Here we are working on Black Swan Pas de Deux from Swan Lake. We have danced it many times, but we still need to rehearse to keep it technically polished. Variations of technique, style and character are based on classical technique, as is all our training. This classical technique is seen at its best in the repertoire of the Imperial Russian Ballet, especially the pas de deux of the choreographer Mario Spetsipa. The Black Swan pas de deux is one of his great creations. Odile the daughter of the evil magician, von Rothbard, tries to enchant Prince Siegfried and make him forget his love for Odette, the queen of the swans.
the last program, I talked about different types of ballerina. There are also different styles of partnering. They range from the glamorous, flashy, virtuoso partnerships, from the classical repertoire, like this grand pas de deux from Don Quixote, My partner, Peter Schofus, carries me, supports me, and presents me to the audience. That's one of the very highest lifts, what we call the presage, and that's the fish dive. A promenade into a supported pirouette. <laughs> to something very different. Like this choreography, Roland Petit is creating and dancing with me for his ballet The Blue Angel. This choreography is expressing a very different relationship. An old man obsessed by a beautiful but unscrupulous young woman. And as with ballerinas, there are national differences too. In Russia, after the revolution, there was a new society, a new audience for ballet, and a new use for ballet. The Soviet ballets introduced very exciting double work with big acrobatic lifts. This new style emanated chiefly from the Bolshoi company in Moscow during the 1930s and 40s. In the ballets of Auguste Bournonville, created for the Royal Danish Ballet, the premier dancer is very much the equal of the ballerina. In these ballets, there is a minimum of the supporting and lifting seen in the ballets from other countries. The cavalier is not found so often behind the ballerina, but next to her, dancing the same steps. takes years of training and many hours of rehearsal to turn the partnering technique of the studio into performance. It also takes a very special physical and mental relationship between the ballerina and her partner to create a partnership on stage. It requires a kind of chemistry, great mutual understanding and sensitivity. 
It is like a good marriage where the wife has plenty of say, but a marriage that never stops being a love affair. This is one of the first rehearsals of the second act per day from Swan Lake with Alexander Sombat. I explained to him how I danced Swan Lake. It's a ballet I learned in Leningrad and have danced for 25 years. As you watch this rehearsal, you will understand what I need from a good partner. The height is very important. But more important is proportion. It seems like we have... I'm small, but uh, proportionally right for the big uh, partner like Sasha. And, He's very sensitive. He is uh, kind of make, give me freedom to move and at the same time feel my center. And sort of by one finger is enough to put me on balance or off balance. Let me show you back. Yeah. I mean, it needs a little bit more movement in your gesture. Uh -huh. yeah, let's let's check without music, please. The last time. Yeah. A little more on the leg. Now too much. Here and move with me. Yeah. From here, move. Do step with me, like. I suppose I have to move. Yeah. I suppose I hope some yes, it's better. It's better, it's easier. strengths, they're physically all right, <laughs> and they can put ballerina up very high, but drop her, don't control her weight when she goes down, so ballerina looks very clumsy and heavy. It's not very much important how you put ballerina up, doesn't matter even high, but how you control the, her weight and make her weightless on the way down. So without, we drop the whole weight in one time, so still he support my body when I go down, still help me in the direction, the next direction. So I feel at ease and comfortable. the hands of my partner, just totally be secure, but I don't need partner to grab me like that, so I cannot move. Uh, so it always give the feeling he give me, I, I do this by myself, he doesn't operate with me. So like, go down, yes? So if you take my, uh, his hand out, I will fail. Can you take? I will fail, you see? So it's right balance. And at the same time, has to be distance between uh, Valerina and partner. Not too close, so she can move freely with the upper torso.
from here. So I don't drop the arm well, because I have to go. Yeah. I, well, I, I take from the shoulder. From the shoulder. Take shoulder. Yes. What well, that is a role which requires certain things. A supple back, a particular quality of line. And I always try to create a certain emotional world for this ballet. The white swan is in every way the emotional opposite of Adil. The black swan, you saw me dance earlier in the program. Uh, I'm in too much stop between, has to be one phrase, so don't stop here, it's already...